Hi, I recently came across this tiny weather icon and the first thing that caught my attention is that it's using one div for each pair of opposing spikes. And if you're wondering why I'm calling them spikes, it's because they look like spikes to me, okay? So they look like spikes. Look at this. They look just like that. So I'm going to call them spikes. Now, um, this uh, is done using an HTML preprocessor, which is something I really like doing as well. But uh, on my videos, some people have complained that they don't really understand what I'm doing there. So I will be showing you the compiled HTML for this alongside uh, uh, that. So let's look at this. So each div is a pair of opposing spikes and each spike is one pseudo element, right? One, the other. Uh, DevTools, you're kind of drunk. Anyway, uh, that's quite a bit of HTML and uh, let's look a bit at the CSS. And this is quite a bit as well and there's quite a bit of repetition even though it's using a CSS so that could have been a loop. Anyway, today I'll be showing you how to do this with a single element, no pseudo elements and a lot less CSS. So yeah, look at this, it's so nicely responsive. We'll make it responsive too. Okay. Let's get started. So we already have um, that uh, div right there and we're going to have dot emoji because we can do that in CSS. Let's maximize this. It's super annoying. So as you can see, we already have the colors there. We're going to set a size and this is going to be uh, the diameter of the inner circle. So the innermost circle, that one. And this is going to be, let's say, we want to make it responsive, right? So with set to that diameter, height set to that same diameter, uh, we're going to set the dummy background. We're going to set border radius 50% so that it's nice and round. We're going to set, uh, but first let's take care and um, make height full height. This is going to give us a scroll bar. So let's get rid of that margin zero and we can collapse the body we won't be needing to put anything else here. We're going to set place self. Oh yeah, I cannot use a keyboard center. Now having done this, we're going to create a mix in here. So mix in arrays. Okay. And we're going to have a number of arrays or spikes or whatever you want to call them. Uh, so that number, and then we're going to have a pointiness factor and then finally, we're going to have the list of colors, which is going to be the same as there. Okay, let's say that the number is actually. Let's um, include race. So the number is going to be 16. The pointiness factor we will use a dummy value of 0.8 for now. And we're going to use that list of colors. Okay, so having done this, here we're going to compute the actual number of polygon points and this is going to be twice uh, n. We're going to compute a base angle and this is going to be 360 degrees over m and we're going to have a list of points which is initially empty. Then we're going to have a loop and within this loop for i from 0 all the way up to m, sorry, uh, and here we're going to have a current angle and this one is going to be so minus 90 degrees 90 uh, plus i times the base angle and then we're going to have a current factor and this is going to use a ternary here so if i modulo 2 so it's going to depend on the parity so i okay so if I modulo 2, then this is going to be 1. Otherwise, it's going to be that current, that uh, factor, sorry. Now here, for the list of points, this is going to be its previous version. And we're going to add. So it's going to start from the middle. So the origin is going to be 50%, 50%. And to that origin, we're going to add 50% um, times the current factor times cosine of the current angle. And in order for this uh, thing to work, uh, we're going to need import uh, compass. OK, 
Okay, so having done this, we can actually bring that 50% out in front. So that's going to be one, right? So we brought that 50% uh, out in front. And now we're going to have something similar along the y axis, except this is going to be sine, not cosine. And here we're going to set clip path polygon that list of points. So you can see it now. Now, next thing that we're going to set here is background, and we're going to have a conic gradient. We don't even have autocomplete for this. And this is going to I'll use that list of colors. So we're going to have the first color. Uh, oops, my neighbors are being noisy. Uh, twice the base angle. And um, the second color. And again, we're going to have a sharp transition and four times the base angle. And this is going to be a repeating one. And I misspelled there, so it's B, not V. So you can see it's already starting to look like something. Now, let me show you here. So that gap right there, we're going to set that as a padding. And um, the border width is going to be uh, the height of those spikes, or rays, or whatever you want to call them. Anyway, so let's say that we're going to have that border width and it's going to be a fraction of that diameter. Then we're going to have the padding and this in turn is going to be a fraction of the border. And of course you can modify those values. Uh, so border, solid, that border width, transparent, padding set to that volume. Okay, and uh, now we're going to set this to border box. Okay, and we're also going to have uh, a radial gradient. This is going to use that list of colors and it's going to be limited to the content box. Um, yeah, for some reason, Compass doesn't like that. Anyway, let's compute a proper factor. So the proper factor is going to be the inner diameter, uh, the one of that disk, over the total diameter. So the pointiness factor is going to be the inner diameter d over uh, d plus twice the border and twice the padding. So twice padding plus border. So that's our pointiness factor. And here we're pretty much done with the mixin, so we can collapse that as well. And here we're going to create a mask. Uh, but first, we're going to have a full, and this is basically full coverage. So it covers, it's uh, basically a fully opaque, fully covering layer. So well, let's say it's going to be something like linear gradient red to red because this is this has an alpha of one everywhere and it covers everything so we're going to have full and um, then we're going to have another layer again fully covering except this one is going to be restricted to the padding box now if we set uh, this mask This won't do anything, right? Because it, it just covers everything. But if we set, actually, let's just uh, copy paste that uh, mask composite. We set it to XOR. So we XOR the border box and the padding box. You can see we get that. But we got rid of the part in the middle, which we want to keep. So we're going to add yet another layer and this one is going to be content box right 
So now we have that nice result. Uh, last step, but first, sorry. Okay, so this is going to be without that prefix. And of course, the standard version is exclude, not XOR. Uh, yeah, we don't even have autocomplete for that. Anyway, last step is going to be the animation. So we're going to have here keyframes rotate to transform rotate one turn. Now here we're going to have animation rotate 16 seconds linear infinite. So this should pretty much do it. Uh, so yeah, and here we have uh, one six uh, eight. That was uh, two more ten. Uh, here we have five seven twenty one CSS declarations. Not too bad. So um, yeah, this is pretty much it. This is what I wanted to show you for today. And uh, if you like this video, if you like the work that I'm putting out since early 2012 and you want me to be able to do more in the future, please consider supporting it. You can do so by being a cool cat and becoming a patron on Patreon. The link is going to be in the description. Or you can get me something off my Amazon wishlist. Again, the links are going to be in the description. Or you can at least share this to show the world what can be done with CSS these days. Because honestly, I think it's pretty damn cool. In any event, thanks for watching and until next time. Bye!